When you talk about Sweden, three things come to your mind. IKEA, meatballs, PewDiePie. But if you're a bike guy like me, you know that the Swedes also make a bike called Husqvarna. And they've been on sale in India for quite a while. But they haven't been able to make that mark that they really wanted. And they took it personally. So they've come out with a new generation of Svartpilin and Vitpilin. Now, how is it? Is it better? And will it make its mark in the country? Well, there's only one way to find out. And first impressions, it's a proper looker. Now, having arrived at my playground for the day, let's just talk about the looks because my oh my, this arguably is the best looking single cylinder 300cc to 500cc bike in my opinion that is open to the table. Now, moving from the front, uh, you get these blacked out spoked wheels with Pirelli Scorpion STR tires, more on that later. Moving on towards the side, you can see that now most of the mass and the design elements have been spread out more compared to the previous generation. The last Swart Pillin and Bit Pillin had most of their design elements cramped into the front and the rear was a more simplistic design. However, now you can see that since it's got a bigger tank, 9.5 to 13.5 liters, it's also become more muscular in terms of width and all of that design uh, from the tank moves down to, towards the bum where you would be sitting. Uh, Talking about the side profile, still we can look at the new trellis frame which is completely exposed and the offset monoshock suspension in the rear. Moving on towards the rear, you can also see that uh, the rear subframe has been newly made and it is completely different to the Duke 390s but I preferred the looks of the previous generation since this area in the subframe has become rather chonky. I would have preferred to get a tyre hugger, maybe it is an option, maybe it's not or maybe it might come later on. But this new mud flap makes it look a little bit different. However, it doesn't ruin the look that badly and you can always remove it just like this, the sari guard, which absolutely ruins the look. Like Indian government, please remove this law, you're just ruining the looks of all the rear ends of all the motorcycles in India. With the looks being done, let's go have some fun see what the bike is all about and uh, yeah we have little time so let's just blast it quickly and go back After a thorough, fun shakedown of the bike, I can confidently say that the Svartpelen 401 is a pretty capable bike. I wouldn't uh, rank it with the creme de la creme of uh, the Indian off-road market, but it is a very capable bike off-road, especially with these Pirelli Scorpion tyres that are, do a fantastic job in giving you grip off the road. Even on sandy patches, I had my MTC off and uh, the bike was doing a fantastic job at keeping track. Especially with the longer dimension, it's also easier to move along with the bike and it would be easier for a person who's not an expert to be able to enjoy the bike even off-road. Talking about the engine, it is the same LC4C engine you would get in the Gen 3 Duke 390 and I have been assured that the map is ridiculously similar to the Gen 3 Duke 390s, that the torque curve is not flat, but it is flatter 
so it gives you a bit more leverage uh, to ride the throttle even when you're losing grip in the rear it's a bit more predictable to ride the throttle which is better for a novice rider in fact uh, the other difference that i really enjoyed were the brakes the front brakes get you amazing bite on the road and off the road the front brake gives you immense feedback it's gone up by 10 mm but it's made a world of a difference as i mentioned before the bike is 20% longer and 20% wider making it a very nice bike to ride in terms of leverage and it is also a very predictable motorcycle even when the ride gets tough talking about the chassis it is the first time we are getting to see this Gen 3 Duke Trellis frame in a off-road capable motorcycle and I am pleasantly surprised transitions are actually really easy and the lively characteristics of that chassis have not been lost which in my opinion is a very good news but sadly fun is over and it's office hours so time to head off into the city and see how the bike does on a daily route Not gonna lie, that was a fun ride. Even in the city, it does pretty well in terms of impressing you and keeping you excited. Now, talking about the ergonomics, the bike has gotten slightly lower thanks to the offset monoshock in the rear. The seat height has been able to go down, and the ground clearance has also gone up from 145 to 147 mm. It's an improvement, nonetheless. And I mean, the more the better when it needs to be going off-road or over boulders. The seat height has gotten lower from 842 to 820 mm, making it a bit more accessible to the Indian average of 55. I am 59, and I'm rather comfortable. 59, 510. I am rather comfortable, and I can still like stand on the bike without my tiptoes, making it a really comfortable bike. Moving on towards on the move. the bike is rather square but you still have the slightly committed position you would get similar to the duke 390 now when you're actually pushing it off road and you want to stand up you still are leaning a little bit in towards the handlebars but uh, if you want to go harder off road it's not that difficult to put handlebar risers and get the job done In fact this for the city is very well balanced in terms of ergos it's very neutral and since the seat is so large and you've got so much place to move there is so many different combinations for you to stay comfortable on the ride that this bike is really versatile so i have not had any form of pressure problems or any form of wrist problems in on the move and i've been riding it the whole day i've actually been very impressed with the rider triangle and uh, talking about the technology it's rather rudimentary but everything else is an optional extra you get everything that's standard in the segment uh, traction control abs which is all switchable and you also get the bidirectional quick shifter from the ktm which is rather nice however i am struggling to find neutral in between uh, first and second which i think also was there in the duke two, uh, in the duke 390 other than that the phone connectivity option is an optional extra so you're going to have to pay for it and that might draw you towards the KTM Duke 390 but there is a reason why you would pick this over the 390 so let's talk about that if you're looking for a bike that fits everywhere a product that isn't single minded something premium and classy this fits the bill with the Duke 390 is flashy and bright and aggressive the swart pillin is much more sophisticated This bike is for the rider that wants it to fit everywhere but still stand out. Take it to dinner with a pillion. Ride it to office, go for a Sunday morning blast. It's good for all, making this a great option for a single bike garage. Remember the iPad when it was launched people were like why would anyone buy an iPad you can just work on a laptop and play games on your phone but people still bought the iPad because it was such a nice thing and this is 
the same principle why would you pick up a bike that is slightly slower than the KTM Duke 390 in the Canyons or slightly less capable than the Scrambler 400X well because it does both of those jobs really nicely and it also does the commute in a fantastic manner making this a very versatile bike in my opinion the more mature decision is to pick up one of these if you're not a specific rider like if you only go on trails or if you only like to canyon carve this is a do it all machine and that's why i would pick this over any other bike in the entire segment i like its fit and finish i like its tft screen and i like the way the bike rides it is a little bit less lary than the duke 390 but it's a bit more fun than the scrambler 400 making it making it a very versatile bike on that note, do let me know what are your thoughts on the Spartan 401 and what bike would you pick out of this massive entry-level performance segment. I, for one, would pick this one just because it is the smartest decision. But everyone has their own choice. So do let us know down in the comments below. That's it from my end. I'll see you guys in the next one.